In this class we will deal with innovation. Now this is one class amongst many on this topic. It's a very important topic in business studies. Innovation is what gives us change in society. It gives us new products. It gives us uh, new ways of working and new customer experiences, new ways of buying. So innovation is very important and this class just runs across some of the more introductory points about innovation but nonetheless it's very important and it's well worth at the end going back over the class stopping it starting it making your own notes and carefully studying what's contained in the class but as I said there are other classes that do similar jobs in an introductory at an introductory level to this topic that you should also look at and these are available on the course so now let's uh, let's start. Schumpeter, uh, who was one of the seminal uh, workers in this area, Schumpeter, the great Austrian uh, economist back in the 1930s, uh, Schumpeter emphasized the importance of innovation and recognized it as the agent or, or the, the method which gave us newness, gave us new products, new markets, new ways of working and as such it is very important. The role of the entrepreneur should not be played down at this stage because the entrepreneur is the one who spots the gap and then goes about trying to configure resources in such a way as to be innovative, to use the resources in a perhaps an unusual way but a way which generates efficiency and a better product for the customer. So Schumpeter argued that innovation comes about through combinations made by an entrepreneur and these result in a new product. So the entrepreneur uh, having spotted some gap, some niche in the market, some, some area not satisfied by, by producers at the moment, some, some demand has not been satisfied, then some of the producers will start to uh, reconfigure their resources to, to plug that niche. And the ones who do that, of course, are the ones who have the entrepreneurs, the individuals who are prepared to take a risk, who can imagine what the, the demand will be like and what needs to be done. So the upshot of all of this is that a new product can come into existence. Now the new product may be a, a variation of an existing product which has been, we say, radically redesigned, radically fundamentally redesigned. But sometimes the new product could be just uh, slightly different, in which case we say it's incremental. The innovation is incremental. It, it just adds a small difference. Enough to influence the, the customers. Customers like new products as well, generally speaking. They don't like staleness. They don't like an existing product over and over and over because it, it becomes boring. And they like newness. So taking an existing product and just tweaking it, just freshening it up, may cause a, a resurgence in demand. Or it may be, as I said, an entirely new product, just using the resources of the company in a different way to make a new product. But as I said, it could result in a new product or a new resource. It could mean opening up a new market, and that could be the innovation. Perhaps the product being produced by the company is aimed at a certain demographic, aimed at uh, people up to the age of, let's say, 25. Now, by some readjustments on the product, it could appeal to people over 55. So, the product has been redesigned and a new market has, has been opened up. By, simply by innovating the product, it now becomes attractive to other consumers. In this case, in terms of uh, the age structure of the population, uh, a new market could be opened in that way perhaps. But it could be that the new market that's opening is op opening overseas. Or it could be a new market is opening 
uh, because in the local area there is no outlet that supplies the product so uh, they're being innovative and bringing a new service to the community bringing a new product to the community it could be just simply a new way of organizing the business perhaps the uh, the structure of the business has been uh, made redundant or outdated because of the impact of technology maybe the reporting procedures within the business are no longer efficient and that perhaps a, a local area network a LAN within the business would be much more efficient so it could be restructuring the business perhaps reallocating roles to different managers or uh, moving the the even the, the layout of the offices and of the production departments and the stores and just changing around so it is more precisely configured to what has been produced what, what is required and that could be the innovation it could be a new source of supply perhaps uh, the the buyers have become aware that the raw materials or the components can be uh, bought in from different sources and in the context of a globalized market there, there seems to be almost endless opportunities for this to happen that producers on the other side of the world uh, are suddenly discovered and perhaps they're not making the product exactly as required it, it might have to be tweaked a little they may have to speak with the production people in the in the company overseas but a new source of supply could be uh, could be arranged and that could be the innovation now the mechanisms for or the mechanisms of innovation well first of all it's a novelty in product or service it's a newness in the product or the service it's offering something no one else does it's having uniqueness in the market and this is highly desirable from the consumers point of view because as I said earlier consumers like new products generally speaking they like newness they like, they like modernity so novelty in the product or service is important it's the way in which uh, society moves it gives us new products new ways of living new experiences it makes our lives easier it's better quality so it's it's novelty in in the product or service there could also be novelty in the process the way the product is sold it could be sold online for example or sold through shops bricks and mortar shops or it could be sold uh, on through, through the post it, it can be perhaps marketed in different ways as well it, the information about the product can be disseminated over the internet or on television on the radio through magazines there's a whole variety of ways in which the the company can be uh, innovative they can have this novelty in process there's also of course the the novelty in the processes that make the product the way the machinery is configured or the types of machinery perhaps it's computer controlled or uh, it involves robotics or um, train special training for the, the personnel there's a novelty there's a newness about the whole process and also a complexity uh, offer something which others find difficult to master and that's sound advice if a company comes up with a good idea they don't want to make it easy for others to copy it it will be imitated there will, there will be um, clones of that produced chances are but make it difficult for them to make a good uh, imitation so the product should have particular functionality and particular designs which make it difficult uh, for for others to copy and the timing try to be the first 
to make the product or to introduce the innovation Th that gives first mover advantage uh, customers will see something new and will see it from that particular company first so the company's image will be enhanced it will be uh, they'll have a better reputation uh, and the others will play catch up other companies have to try and follow and try to persuade the customers to come back to them if it can't be the first uh, if it can't be the first in, in the market have the first mover advantage it should at least be fast follower it should be uh, on the market very fast after another company launches so it should be there very fast add or extend competitive factors um, competitive factors well the price is a competitive factor if the price is reduced that should give the company an advantage but also perceptions of quality are also very important um, aftercare service is important um, contact with the company is important the quality of the product as I said is very important all of these are competitive factors so the company should try to extend these if it is producing a low priced but high quality good then that uh, means that the chances are that company will do well in the marketplace so try to add or, or extend if it's already uh, offering a good quality product try and improve it if the product is already very competitive in the market try to cut its price further if possible so try to extend the advantage that makes it difficult for the competitors but it also secures at least to some extent secures the presence of the company in the market it has added to the competitive factors or it has extended them have a robust design contribute a, a platform um, on which other variations can build in other words make the design such if possible make it such that uh, it can be modified later uh, additional components can be added to it um, if, if we consider uh, an old-fashioned laptop uh, it had a hard drive and maybe uh, a place for an external disk now they have SD cards they have very fast uh, ports they have memory sticks that can be used uh, uh, it can cast images onto a, a television it can so now that platform is used in many different ways lots of different functions and that has it's been innovated to get to here so try to build a product which can be uh, augmented, added to over time, new components added in, new facilities added to it. The product grows with it and if it doesn't, if it's a situation that um, the, the customers have to buy a completely new product, at least the company is already tooled up for one that was produced before and now part of the tooling can be recycled can be used again so there are economies in trying to design in uh, innovation so when innovation occurs the company can quite easily do it and it's cost effective reconfiguring the parts while building more effective business networks uh, sometimes companies have uh, networks of business they have networks for suppliers networks in distribution uh, look at the various networks it works with and try to reconfigure them to get more efficiency out of them try to 
uh, understand what's happening within the organization in terms of the ways in which processes are conducted within the organization to see if they can be reconfigured as well, if they can be redesigned. So it's a question of really constantly looking at what the company does, what the product is, um, the functionality of the product, design of the product, looking at all of that constantly to see if something can be added to it or some changes made to it which will improve the product and therefore improve its standing in the marketplace. I suppose to that end the uh, expenditure the company may make on research and development and on prototyping and on uh, just generally trying to improve the product and having a department dedicated to that could be seen as money well spent. So these are different ideas about innovation, uh, the way in which innovation can uh, take place. But that's all we're going to deal with in this short video, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.